This is the Coolertron 48 key keypad. It's a pretty slick keypad here. This is the box that came in, just a generic box. It's got a few items in here. It's got the USB cable, of course. It's got the little warranty card. A little quick start guide. And then some stickers. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's all that's in the box here. One thing to note is that it is the older style mini B connector. And that goes right here on the actual keypad. There is another connector, which I'm not sure what that's for. I do not remember. I think it says in the instructions, but this is the one that you want to plug into. There are three LEDs. And then of course the 48 keys. They are very nice filling. They're mechanical, of course. They are not the cherry mechanical switches. The click feels nice, it's not really loud. You can remove the keycaps like you would any other mechanical keyboard. Ideally you would have a keycap remover, but you can use a small screwdriver in place of that if you don't have one of those. You just stick it underneath the keycap and you can kind of pry it up or push up and they come right off. And to put back, you just push back down, straight down. To program this, what you do is you hold down the top left key and you plug it into your computer. What'll happen is that once it's in programming mode, these LEDs will alternately flash and that will let you know that you are in programming mode. And then you use the software to do what you need to do to program the keys. You can, you can have these keys act as just a single simple you know, key, any letters you want, or you can have it be like a control shift A or control X or whatever you want it to do. You can have it do whatever you want. And what's great about this is that once you program the keyboard, it's portable. Now there are other keypads out there. There's a couple other ones that I was looking at before I bought this one. And of course there's the Steam Deck, which is pretty awesome looking. It has those cool buttons that you can program too. And each button is a little LCD to display. And it looks really cool, but there's only a few buttons on that thing and it costs a lot more money. These are about 70 to $80. And the Steam Deck is about $130. You can plug this right into your computer and it does not require any drivers, so that's pretty cool. You just plug it in, Windows will recognize it, or Linux or Mac will recognize it, do what it needs to do, and a minute later, you're up and running with this keypad. The software is free, of course. You can download it from the site that the instructions tell you to go to. The files come zipped up in a RAR file, so you will need some kind of unzipping program that can handle that. Older versions of Windows cannot open those files or uncompress those files, I believe. But you can download a free program called 7-Zip if you're on Windows and it will handle that type of file just fine. When you unzip the file that you download, it has instructions in PDF format and it has the program itself that you use to program the keypad. I'm gonna take you to my desktop and show you an overview of the PDF files that come in the zipped up RAR file and then also a quick overview of the program that it comes with to program the keypad. This is the software user manual. It's in PDF format, of course. As you can see, it is quite extensive. Lots of text, of course, and images, figures, and all that good stuff. This is their quick start guide. It's PDF format. And it contains pretty much everything you need to know to get going with this keypad. When you want to do anything in the software, you need to put the keypad into programming mode. And you do that by holding down the top left key of the keypad and then plugging it into your computer. And keep holding it until the LED starts to alternately flash. And once they do, then you know that you're in programming mode and then you can open up the software. And here, this is a quick overview 
a very basic overview of what the software is and does. First, you're going to want to select the profile on board. That will allow you to select which profile you want. You just click on the number or the default one, whichever one you want, and then click OK. Now you're working in that profile. Then you can click on a button and click on the key type drop down and choose which one you want here and do your thing. If you want to click on the keyboard to use, use a, a keyboard on screen, you can do that. Click on that to program it. And then when you're done, you click on OK. You can always go back into it, make your, make your changes. I have Control and Shift selected here. And I hit OK. And now it will do a Control Shift Q for me. When you're done, or as you progress, click on Save Profile on Board. That will actually save the profile, which you, the work you've been doing. Choose a number, and you click on OK. And then you can change profiles if you want to. Select another profile to work with. So now, now we're on profile number two. Or go back to number one. Now we're on that profile. Note the queue is different looking. You can back up a profile. And you can load a backup of a profile. By clicking on the corresponding buttons. When you're done, click on End and Reboot. That will close the program and put the keypad back into regular working mode. To back up a profile, you're going to want to put the keypad into programming mode as we discussed. And then you're going to open up the software program. And you're going to want to select a profile to back up. Hit OK. And then you go ahead and just click the backup profile button. and. Navigate to the folder that you want to put it in and give it a name, a file name. And go ahead and click, when you're done, go ahead and click Save. And you're done. Go ahead and click End and Reboot now, and you're all set. Here I'm showing you that I programmed the top two rows already. And I'm going to do the rest of my keys. Click on the key you want. Click on the key type from the drop down menu. I'm going to do hotkey function number three. And I'm going to put in a key value. In my case, I'm going to put in a Z. And I want it to do control and shift also. So I click on, on those and click OK. And then click on the next key I want to program. And I do the same thing. Hotkey function, the key, the letter I want it to do, or number if you want, X, Control, Shift, and OK. So you just, I'm just going to keep doing this to the rest of my keys until I'm all done here. For keys that you don't want to do anything, you can choose number nine, disable key, and hit OK. And now it shows null as the label. So all the, all the rest of the keys here, I'm gonna just do that and finish up. When you're all done programming the keys you want to do, you should save it. Click on Save Profile on Board and choose the profile number or default and click on OK. Now I like to go back and just look at a couple keys to make sure that they look OK. This one looks good, so I click OK. Click on end and reboot when you're all done. 
that will close the program and put your keypad back into normal working mode. So as you see, the program is not pretty, but it works. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty quick. If you'd like to get your own keypad, I have a link to it on Amazon's website below in the description. Disclaimer, it is an affiliate link. You do not pay any more for it, but I do get a small commission. Why would you buy one of these? Almost every productivity program out there has shortcut keys. Photoshop, any photo editing program, video editing program, CAD programs, spreadsheets, word processing. They have key combinations that allow you to do things quicker and easier, but they require you to press Control, Shift, A, or Alt, Control, X, or whatever. Things like that. But with this thing, you can program one key to do those for you. So this can speed you up in whatever you're working in. Say for day trading, you can program these keys to do things like buying multiple shares of something or selling multiple shares of something or exiting a position in, in increments. I have the top row of keys to buy di different amounts of shares. I have the second row to sell or sell short various amounts of shares. I have the third row to close a position in a short position called covering and multiple uh, scaling options by percentage. I have the fourth row to sell out of a position in percentage. I still have the entire two rows down here that I can still program and use for other things. Another cool thing about this is that you can have profiles you can have every single key on this programmed for something right but that's one profile you can have I think you can have four profiles actually and so you can have one profile for an entire for one program or, or multiple programs however you want to do it it doesn't matter but you can have all these keys programmed right in one profile but you can have another profile to have these keys programmed differently. Completely another set of combinations. So it's, it's pretty cool. You can have one of these buttons switch between the profiles too. So that you don't have to go into the programming mode to change profiles. So with those profiles you can really have almost 200 different keys programmed. If you think of it that way. So I hope you found this video useful and informative and enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time.